Hey everyone, it's Gregor Arturo here in Ashland, Oregon, uh, hanging out with Rival Tech, and there is an idea, a really awesome idea, I wanted to share with you. I recently watched a documentary called Light and Darkness with a few other friends here, and all of us were just like losing our minds. They were just, we were completely losing our minds. And it, I had a moment where I said, I was just like, five, four, three, two, one, system failure reboot it's exactly what happened in terms of like my mind of this thought construct that had been like in my head for so long and all of a sudden it just it just disappeared it just crumbled it just destabilized itself and all of a sudden this original rendition of reality suddenly appeared in front of me in terms of how light needs to exist with dark and i've said this before i've understood it logically but i, I didn't really concretely pull it together and so I really recommend you seeing this documentary and, and understanding, uh, I can't say it's Goeth, the, the poet, uh, he, he had a, for 40 years he studied color and he wrote a book called Theory of Color, which I, I plan on reading. It just blows my mind what's in it in terms of if you have a colored, shadow, colored light hit, say, an object, it creates a colored shadow behind it. But the shadow has no photons, only the front does. And so it's just these quantum... Uh, peculiarities found within color that are so interesting and that color really exists between the black and the white and that if you in terms of motion itself can cause the refraction of light and so what this triggered in something I've, I've understood for a while intuitively is that a conductor is a waveguide and that if you want to use an electrical conductor correctly you want to use it to refract reflect light off it instead of refract and when we see electron movement and current and resistance that's a refraction process of the wave uh, uh, entering the conductor when you want to use that uh, waveguide to reflect light and so copper reflects light really good above uh, 500 nanometers which I believe is uh, around uh, the, the wavelength of yellow and then up to orange red then up into uh, infrared and, and radio waves and so on. It reflects radio waves amazingly. And so you don't want it to actually pierce the conductor. And so a, an insulator refracts light, such as a crystal. So if you take these two concepts, well, what, what, what brings forth is the actual mechanism of what's going on in the sun, in our stars, in that it's not this, furn this nuclear furnace burning out and thus supports the, the theories of entropy and decay and that we're just in a universe that's slowly dying and falling apart when it's really self-organizing and growing in this really expansive, beautiful way. And so, to me, a star is an evolved planet. There's a process of it moving through the cycles of an earth planet to a water planet to a gas plant to a plasma and then returning to spirit in terms of a supernova. This is the basic concept found in terms of the, the pentagram and this five-step cycle of, of matter. And when you get to plasma, plasma is, is the part where the gas ionizes. And one thing I learned when I personally got to hang out with Nassim uh, on uh, Nassim Haramine on Kauai for a couple of days, is he told me in this toroidal model that he accelerated to the speed of light, that the ionization of that gas inside it was a mix of all the inert gases and a little bit of hydrogen at a specific ratio because it rayed the complete spectrum of light as found with the sun. And so if you have a plasma on the surface of, of a star or a planet and then all of a sudden that plant, that plant is exposed to an extremely dense compressed electromagnetic field so such as say Jupiter somehow breaks free from its gravitational ring and then leaves the solar system and it's bombarded with all of this electromagnetic energy then all of a sudden um, the the gas ionizes on the outside but really to understand the ionization of plasma is when plasma itself reaches a self-reflective state and it becomes reflecting the compression of space-time. When you compress space-time in terms of light, it creates the lightness and it creates the darkness. Both are needed to, to exist at the same time. And so essentially, the vacuum of space is just a complete refraction of light into infinite nothingness, while particles and stars and plants are these extreme compression points 
of light in the system and they're the reflective aspect of the system. And so the, the one thing to also think about is that the plasma becomes this reflective disk of energy, but the energy that it's reflecting is just the reflections of all the other stars in the universe. And so you just have these spherical mirrors upon spherical mirrors reflecting light waves back and forth in this giant fractal matrix of everything. It's pretty simple and wonderful in that our stars are just waveguides are nodes for a beautiful resonance circuit. The best goddamn RCL circuit you could ever possibly imagine. <sighs> yes. It's simple, it's good, it's easy. Occam's razor is still flying to the top of this scientific par paradigm. That the simplest answer is usually the best. And goddamn, I'm getting to the point of saying it is always the best. The simpler, the better. And so Tesla, Tesla developed the Tesla turbines, one of his greatest inventions he's ever made in terms of the simplicity of how it, of how the surface tension grabs onto materials to create a rotational momentum. Uh, it's the same basis of, of really what makes water very interesting in terms of surface tension of water and, and Tesla utilizing biomimicry, replicating the dynamics of how surface tension can create powerful flows of energy as seen with a river. And that gets into the ideas of Victor Schauberger. It just keeps going on and on. But, yeah, stars are mirrors of other stars. And... It, you can really get into ideas of what sunspots really start to relate to and the alignments of planets with stars and other solar systems in that it's a, just a giant vibrational resonance circuit. It's pretty, pretty fabulous. It sounds like an orchestra. Anyways, that, that, was, that was my little cosmological rant I'd share. Ciao.